Bonjour, fall is here and it's the perfect time to embrace the cozy vibes and decorate your space for the season. If you're like me, you love the idea of fall decor but often find it expensive and sometimes lacking that personal touch. That's where DIY projects come in. Not only are they more budget friendly, but they also allow you to create unique and charming decorations that truly reflect your style. So let's dive into some adorable and cozy fall DIY projects that will elevate your space and bring the autumn spirits alive. Acrylic paint does not permanently adhere to glass, making it a great option for decorating your mirror, for example, for each season. For this DIY, you will need a glass surface, such as a mirror, and acrylic paint and or markers. First, plan a cute design. For example, you can paint autumn leaves on one corner and a few other on the opposite side to create balance. Then paint the colors using acrylic markers if you are lucky enough to have all the colors you want, but if like me, you don't, paint them just with regular acrylic paint and let it dry. When it's dry enough, draw your lines and voila, you now have a lovely fold theme mirror. This technique can also be applied to larger mirrors, picture frames or even windows. Okay, I don't know about you, but I love having a hot beverage on cold fall days. Even more so, I enjoy matching my mugs to the season. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. For this DIY project, you will need a plain colored mug, porcelain or glass paint and or markers, and an oven. Once again, I will paint my autumn leaves on my mug, and it won't be the last time either. And to ensure an even and balanced pattern, I first trace my design with a pencil. This way, I can easily erase and replace each leaf as needed. Once I'm satisfied with the design, I use a glass paint to paint the leaves. I choose glass paint instead of porcelain paint for the colors because I want it to be a bit more translucent to be able to play with the intensity of the color. I make sure also to make the strokes that go from the top to the bottom of each leaf to create beautiful and natural looking lines. If you make a mistake, don't worry, you can simply wipe it off. Or if it's already too dry, you can wash it off with water simply. The paint is only permanent after you cook it, so you have time, do not worry. After finishing all the leaves, wait for the paint to dry a bit, then use a porcelain marker to draw the lines. If you don't have markers, just use a thin brush, but marker will make your line a bit more precise. After that, you will need to wait for 24 hours. I know it's long, but just be patient. You need the paint to be all the way dry before you cook it. After 24 hours, you can just cook it at 160 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. Please note that the specific instruction for your paint may vary, so be sure to follow your specific instructions. And voila, you now have a lovely full mug that you can put in the dishwasher and still look fabulous. I mean, look at that. The next DIY is one of the best seasonal decor in my opinion, and it is the wreath. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly, I just don't know how to pronounce it. So yeah, you can mock me in the comment if I do not pronounce it correctly. So let's get started. For this DIY, you will need oranges, apples, rosemary, cinnamon. You will also need a wreath base. So I found mine into the shop Axiom, but I linked a similar one from Amazon in the description below. Gloves, rope, and hot glue. First, gather around about 13 branches of rosemary. If you have more and want more, you can just put more, if you have less, just put less. <laughs> it's up to you. Next, slice the oranges and apple into thin slices. Make sure to cut the oranges correctly by cutting the top or bottom and continue that way. Otherwise, they might end up looking like this and it's, it's not good, it, it won't, it's not good. 
Once you have all your slices, you can put them on an oven rack and let them dry in the oven at 70 degrees more or less Celsius for at least 4 hours. Keep an eye on them though. If you want some darker oranges, you can bake some of the slices for an additional 30 minutes at 120 degrees Celsius. Once your slices are dry, pick your slices up and your spices and you can start creating your wreath. <laughs> I personally started by attaching the rosemary with a rope, then I experimented with different arrangements and grouped the slices together before attaching them to the wreath. I first attached them with hot glue and then hot glue them to the wreath, it was easier that way. I tried various combinations and made adjustments along the way to determine what looked good and what did not. For a pleasant aroma, feel free to use plenty of cinnamon and most importantly, cloves, as they smell just amazing. If your wreath has a middle bar like mine, you can get creative with it. I had an idea of making wool birds and placing them on there. But if you don't have the middle section, you can just place the bird at the bottom if you prefer. And if you don't want birds, just don't make birds. That's the beauty of DIY. So to make the birds, you will need thin wool in three different colors, cardboard pieces measuring 9 cm and 12 cm, and half a A4 sheet of paper for each bird. Now, making the birds is simple. Just take the 12 cm cardboard piece and wrap the dark colored wool around it, creating a thick strip of wool that is more or less 1 or 2 cm wide. Now cut one side to create 24 cm wool strings. Repeat the process with the light colored using the 9 cm cardboard piece and again with a mix of color with the 9 cm cardboard piece as well. Okay, since it's way easier to show you how to make them than to explain it, I'll just leave it there and you can create the birds following the steps I show you here. Once you are happy with the result, use the cloves to create the beak and the eyes as shown. And finally, glue them to your wreath and voila! Trust me, this will make your home smell like fall and it's, it's just lovely. I think we can all agree that pumpkins and cozy pillows are the heart of autumn. So why not make some cozy pumpkin pillows? For this DIY project, you will need a cute and soft sock, or multiple if you want to make multiple tiny pumpkin, a fluffy pillowcase, some rope, all-purpose glue or hot glue, and a cheap pillow. To make the small one, cut a sock at the heel and turn it inside out. Knot the end of the sock with a piece of rope and then flip it inside in again and you should have something like this. Now cut open your cheap pillow, take the filling and put some into the sock. Once you think you have enough filling, just close the sock with the end of a long piece of rope. Now with the rope go around the sock and then around the top part and then pull it really tight. Repeat this at least three times. Then go around the top part, around and around and around to make the stem. You might need to cut a bit or to make it smaller and thinner just to shape your stem as you like. Then glue the end and voila! You can now do the same with the pillowcase and here's how I did mine.
Okay, you cannot say that this is not cozy, full, autumn-y, and super cute. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, cozy pillows are an essential part of a good fall season. So let's make a special pillow just for this time of year. For this DIY, you will need a fall colored pillowcase, a pencil, a white acrylic marker or white acrylic paint. It, it's just way easier with a marker, a pillow to put into the pillowcase, baking sheet and an iron. Iron. It's really hard to say this word. <laughs> so place a board or a piece of cardboard inside your pillowcase to provide a smoother surface for drawing. Use a pencil to trace the desired design onto the pillowcase. In my case, I will paint, well, you guessed it, autumn leaves. <laughs> this step allows you to experiment with different placement and easily make changes if needed. Once you have the layout finalized, use the acrylic marker to trace over your pencil lines. I recommend retracing the design a second time to make it more prominent. Now it's time to set the design into the fabric. Simply place a sheet of baking paper inside the pillowcase and on top of the design. Then iron the pillowcase on medium heat for 10 minutes or high heat for 3 to 5 minutes. Afterward, you should be able to wash the pillowcase without any issues. I absolutely adore this simple yet incredibly cute DIY project and I think it's one of my favorite so far. Okay, let's continue. One essential element in my space is my computer setup, but currently it does not have an autumnal look. So changing the wallpaper and screensaver on my computer screen is an easy way to make it look stunning. You can find my Mac, iPhone and iPad wallpapers and setups on my Etsy shop and I will link them into the description below. It helps me a lot if you just consider buying them. However, my keyboard still has a summery vibe. Even though it looks great, I still want to change that into a domino vibe. <laughs> so, for this project, you will need keycaps for your keyboard, a primer spray paint that I don't have that, but I'll explain, regular spray paint, a top coat spray paint, and a white acrylic marker. First, choose which key you want to customize and how. I found it helpful to take a picture of my keyboard and try out different layouts before setting on my favorite. Since we will be painting the, the keycaps, it's important to mark them so we know which one they are after we painted them. So I marked the inside of each keycap with a pencil for this purpose. Now it's time to paint. I initially followed the advice of my spray paint seller and skipped the primer, but that was a mistake, so please do use a primer. If you are interested, I have included the reference of each colors I used on the screen and in the description below. Make sure when you paint to spray paint all the sides of the keycaps evenly and clean your spray caps after you use them to ensure you can use them again. Now let the keycaps dry in a dry and warm environment for, you know, at least 24 hours. Again, it's, it's just too long. But once your keycaps are dry, you can use your acrylic markers and write on them indicating which keys is which. You could skip this step, but it will be way harder to use your keyboards if you skip it. So now let the marker completely dry and then you can spray a few and multiple thin layer of top coat. And this is where I made the mistake by not priming mine. I had to redo six of my keycaps because the paint just went crazy. I have no, no other words. Okay, now it is dry, you can just replace them on your keyboard and have a lovely autumny keyboard. Please, please, please do not skip the top coat part because it is the most important part if you want your keyboard to last in time. 
and if you use your keyboard a lot i will suggest you to sometimes redo a layer of top coat just to ensure it stays perfect of course i i hope i don't have to precise that you don't paint your keyboard but only keycaps do not paint on the keyboard directly and tada you now have a super cute workspace that is as autumnal as the rest of your house and heart thank you for watching this video until the end i hope you got inspired to make your own space cozy and charming for the season don't forget to check the description and tell me which diy is your favorite and which ones you are going to make remember adding your personal touch to your home decor is special so grab your craft supplies and embrace the autumn spirit and let your creativity shine happy crafting and enjoy the beautiful season